the distinguished members from the civil society and representing the academia. I'm very glad to be a part of this debate, Ling Rivers and Dying Rivers, and uh, I thank the organizers for inviting me to speak about the Indus water system. So I'll be talking about the Indus water system under threat. I mean, that is the title of my presentation. But as we know that Indus water system is a very huge system, so I will be focusing on the Jhelum Basin. And if you look on the right hand side here, so it is the Jhelum Basin. Jhelum Basin is synonymous with the Kashmir Valley. Spread over an area of uh, about 16,000 square kilometers. So it drains the entire Kashmir Valley. And we know that part of the Jhelum Basin is across the border also. There is a huge area there that is also called Jhelum, but I will be focusing on this part of the system. And uh, as, uh, you know, I just want to make it clear because, uh, you know, in, in the uh, note also, and uh, it is uh, that I'm representing the Department of Geology and Geophysics, which has been recently renamed as Department of Earth Science. So there is some, because uh, some confusion may be there, because uh, in the uh, notes it is Geology and Geophysics, but it, I'm representing the Department of Earth Science. During the next 20 minutes or so, I will be just focusing, I will be briefly talking about the Indus River system to give an idea, and then focusing on the Jhelum Basin system, and I, with respect to some of the components, you know, how the wetlands in that river system are changing, what is the status of cryosphere, how the land system is changing, and uh, the future projections of the land system, the land degradation, water quality changes in the Jhelum Basin, the stream flow changing, stream flow changes, and also the climate change scenario in the basin. And also at the end, we will draw a conclusion or two. Now, if you look at this, uh, this is the entire Indus basin, and if you look at the number two, that is the Jhelum Basin, which drain, as I said, which drains the entire Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir, I mean the uh, Kashmir Valley of the Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir. And also, I mean, as I said, there is a part which is just uh, down here. And if you look at the upper Indus Basin, I mean, if you look at the state of Jammu and Kashmir, and this is an aerial view of the upper Indus Basin, and Kashmir, this Jhelum Basin is this. Or you can just, this is the Jhelum Basin here. So. And this is Kashmir Valley, but if we look at, we have a, I mean, the other subsystems of the Indus Valley also, Indus Basin also, in this state. And this is the state of Jammu and Kashmir again. And if you look at this, the Jhelum Basin is here. This valley. This is the Jhelum Basin. And here, Jhelum Basin we have divided into 24 watersheds. So you can look at it, you have another opportunity to look at the, this is the Jhelum Basin and we have divided it into 24 watersheds. And if you see the down image, this is the entire Indus Basin here, the upper Indus Basin. <coughs> now if you, if you look at, I mean, my entire talk will be focused on this slide. If you look any, I mean, this will apply to any system. I mean, but the, this is the, this is the philosophy of my research. I mean, uh, whatever I do, and we know that there are dependencies and interdependencies. Nothing in this universe exists independently, and so is the case for the river system. And there are different linkages. If you look at the, let us look at the river ecosystem. I mean, what is happening in in the wetlands, what is happening in the cryosphere the in, that, are, that is in that basin, what is happening to the land surface processes, what is happening to the nutrients, socioeconomic status, climate change, urbanization, many other linkages are there, policy, planning, all that, that ultimately determine the status of the river system. And not only the river system, it could be any political system, economic system, or even our own human system, human body system, there are linkages, and we know that I mean, in order to understand the disease of the system, we need to understand these linkages, how they are impacting. We may have certain 
symptoms. So we need to, from those symptoms, we need to understand these linkages. And you will see that for the rest of the 20 minutes, I will be just talking about the changes in these subsystems and how they impact the Jhelum Basin system. Now, this is the water resource map of the Jumma and Kashmir. So we have huge water resources. I mean, if you look at the number of wetlands, if you look at the, as you saw the image, you know, the June image of Jumma and Kashmir, more than, you know, 60% of it is covered by snow and glaciers. I mean, when, when we talk about the living rivers and dying rivers, I think, uh, I think all the rivers in the state of Jumma and Kashmir are living rivers. But I say that all of them are under threat. So you will see that, you know, at the end of this presentation, though, I mean, they are still living rivers, but you will see how the different components of these living rivers are getting deteriorated. Now, if you look at the state of Jumma and Kashmir, as I said, there are 3,651 wetlands and water bodies. And one third of that you will find in the Jhelum Basin. And we have a huge amount of highland, uh, these, uh, you know, uh, high altitude wetlands, more than 1,143. And if, if uh, those of you who have been to the Srinagar, you know, if you look around the Srinagar, there are scores of wetlands, still water bodies. But I tell you, for the last 40 years, only for during the last 40 years, 20 of them have vanished. And most of them have been converted into the urbanized area. The porch colonies of Srinagar, you will see they are located on these wetlands. Because you see, on the, on the northern side of the Srinagar, there's a barrier, you know, there's a mountain. So it is the southern side and uh, eastern side that, that used to be, you know, there, there used to be when you go on the National Highway towards the north, on the left and right, you had scores of these wetlands. And you still see scores of wetlands, but most of them have been converted into the urbanized areas. Now, one of the important wetlands of Kashmir, I mean, Dal, Many of the people from here or from the abroad come to Srinagar, you know, just Dal is the attraction. So this is the Dal Lake here. And I mean, I, 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 this is the Dal Lake here. And I was analyzing the changes, the socioeconomic changes, the hydrological changes, the, uh, you know, urbanization that has happened around this Dal Lake and how it is impacted. And this is a typical case. Same thing is happening to all the wetlands in the Jhelum Basin system. Because it is very difficult during 20 minutes, you know, this, as I said, that we have been monitoring these wetlands for the last 40 years now. And we have prepared the wetland atlas of the Jumma and Kashmir also. And this is one, this type of studies we have done for each and almost most of the important wetlands in the, in the, in the state. Now, if you look at this, now you look at this table. In these just 10 wards, 10 small areas of uh, Dal Lake, I mean, which are surrounding the Dal Lake, you will see that there have been a lot of changes. I mean, the agriculture has come down. It is from 1969 to 2008. The build-up, if you look at this build-up, it has increased from 13 square kilometers to 17 square kilometers. It is just a small area within that. It is already a congested downtown of the city. But if you look at the entire Srinagar city, you know, or the entire Jhelum Basin, as I will show you, there's a huge increase in the urbanization. But this is an urbanization around the Dal Lake, a small area of 11 square kilometers, 11.6 square kilometers, where the urbanization has increased from 13 to 17 square kilometers almost. The other important significant change that has taken place is the water. If you look at the water surface, the open water surface that has reduced from 14 square kilometers to, you know, there has been a change of almost, uh, you know, four square kilometers, less than four square kilometer area has been lost open areas. And also, a lot of streams uh, have vanished in the vicinity of this. We have done this stream dynasty mapping from each of the areas here. You'll see a lot of streams have vanished uh, around this Dal Lake. Now, what, what does it mean? I mean, if you see the consequences of it, now this is the sediment load. This is nutrient load of the Dal Lake. I mean, that has, if you look at these figures, now you see the the runoff has increased, definitely the runoff because of the lot of concrete there, so there, the hydrological processes, the infiltration has affected, so lot, the, the lot of, you will see in Srinagar just half an hour or one hour rainfall brings all the water, all the roads are getting waterlogged because a lot of concrete has increased there, so the infiltration has reduced. 
The sediment load, the erosion from the catchment of Dal Lake, which is spread over an area of 337 square kilometers, has increased from, you know, you can see from these figures from 13 tons to 19 tons, you know, per, per hectare per year. Similarly, if you look at the other components of the nutrients, total nitrogen, dissolved nitrogen, phosphorus, has increased tremendously into the Dal Lake. And you can see those, I mean, the, the, the huge aquatic vegetations, the weeds that have covered almost to the entire Dal Lake now. And that is a scenario for most of the wetlands in the Kashmir. 